Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Bitcoin right now at $21,100 per coin. Guys, it's looking like Bitcoin is finding support in this level, uh, coincidentally or not so coincidentally, uh, in and around the $20,000 mark, a psychological support level, uh, I'm, I'm sure for many people. Also the back test here on the uh, the former all-time high. So as we know, back in 2017, uh, the, the all-time high for Bitcoin, I mean, it almost did reach $20,000. I believe it was 19,000 and change, $19,666. Now we're seeing that level being tested in the form of support as the market is declining. So guys, we are in a bear market. I guess the next question is, is this the lowest we're going to go or are we going to go even lower? Now at this moment in time, Bitcoin is seeing a correction of roughly 70%. I mean, it dipped down to about 71. Now we're correcting at about 69.3%. So, I mean, in the past, historically, we have seen larger corrections for Bitcoin and most certainly larger corrections for many other altcoins. Uh, like in 2018, we did see about an 85% correction for Bitcoin. So, I mean, I guess some people are wondering, is this the end? Is there more that's going to come? Well, when in doubt, zoom out. Take a listen to Kevin O'Leary here. This is from Antonio Martinez posting this, the halftime report. Listen to Kevin O'Leary on his thoughts on the crypto market. Yes, I have. I own Bitcoin and 32 other blockchain positions projects. Here's my thinking. In the next week or two, we're going to hear a big player go to zero. We had this over the weekend with Celsius. It got basically gated. It's going to go to zero. But I'm talking somebody big. I don't know who it's going to be yet. Somebody's over levered. When they blow up, there'll be panic in the streets. That'll be the bottom. Somebody is over leveraged, there'll be panic in the streets, and that will be the bottom, and we will know, because it will be a major player. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, I did a video a few weeks ago, and uh, in that video, I played this clip of Kevin O'Leary being interviewed by Stan's Berry Research. I'll see if I can find that video, and I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner for you. So... There still needs to be a big player. They still need to go to zero. Michael at Val5 Links uh, bringing this up. And so uh, the other day I did mention uh, venture capital firm Three Arrows Capital. Well, we're getting more info on that, guys. They have reportedly failed to meet their margin calls. So crypto lender BlockFi was among several companies to liquidate at least some of their 3AC's positions, according to a new report. Venture capital firm Three Arrows Capital, or 3AC, has reportedly failed to meet margin calls from its lenders, raising the specter of insolvency after this week's crypto market collapse triggered unforeseen liquidations for the Singapore-based company. Crypto lender BlockFi was among the firms to liquidate at least some of 3AC's positions, according to the Financial Times. Citing people familiar with the matter, FT reported that 3AC had borrowed Bitcoin from the lender but was unable to meet the margin call after the market turned sour earlier this week. So they are in a lot of caca. <laughs> The, the issue surrounding 3AC appear to have impacted Finblocks, a Hong Kong-based platform that allows investors to earn yield on their digital assets. Finblocks said it was forced to reduce its withdrawal limits on Thursday due to concerns surrounding the venture firm. So Three Arrows Capital, um, a very big investment firm, and uh, you know I've been seeing tweet threads on Twitter talking about this particular firm specifically and uh, why this could spell a lot of trouble. Um, I did also see this, guys, posted by Ryan Selkis. Now, uh, he's got some insider information. It looks like, at least this is what he's saying, he says they are rumors, some are secondhand, and they're regarding Three Arrows Capital. One to $1.5 billion in net liabilities. Most of the big lenders are fine now, he says, even if they had some exposure, like BlockFi and Genesis, uh, to be determined on others. The founders have ghosted everyone, including their own team. Defiance Capital may be done. I try not to post rumors, he says, but this feels solid enough to share in light of the fact that everyone seems to be in the dark still here. I'll post corrections and updates uh, if new info becomes available or there's an error above. So uh, Ryan Selkis here has, uh, at least he's uh, saying he's got some insider information with regards to Three Arrows Capital specifically. Um, and Ryan Selkis, obviously, uh, you probably know him. He's the founder of Masari Crypto. He's not just some random Twitter user. Uh, so he's got some credibility, and I don't think he would put his um, his reputation on the line if he did not believe that this was the case. So this is what we've got now going on in crypto. I mean, this is likely going to spell some lower lows. I mean, I hate to say, uh, but this summer, I didn't know how low prices were going to go, but I was saying uh, in previous videos that this summer we could see consolidation and uh, a lot of boring sideways trading before we move to the upside. 
So, you know, that is kind of what we're starting to see, at least at this moment in time. Uh, Forbes Crypto also posted this article, a catastrophic hit. Crypto exchange founders issue serious price prediction warnings as Bitcoin plummets towards $20,000. And Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Solana, and Cardano crash as well. Well, I mean, the entire crypto market is crashing. It's not just those cryptocurrencies. But since the Bitcoin price this week has crashed towards $20,000, a psychological barrier that Bitcoin first topped in late 2017 before entering a three-phase bear market, Ethereum and other major cryptocurrencies, including top 10 coins like BNB, XRP, Solana, and Cardano, have also crashed back, wiping out about $400 billion from the combined crypto market in the last seven days. But this week, guys, Arthur Hayes, the influential co-founder of the Bitcoin and crypto exchange BitMEX, warned of massive selling pressure, he says. If the Bitcoin price breaks below $20,000, telling his traders they might as well shut their computers off for the foreseeable future. Uh, the article goes on down here by saying uh, in a Twitter thread, Hayes, who in May was sentenced to six months of home detention as part of a two-year probationary period after he pled guilty to violating the U.S. Bank Secrecy Act, pointed to data that showed Bitcoin forming a base at $20,000 and Ethereum at $1,000. If these levels break, you may as well shut down your computer because your charts will be useless for a while. So Hayes, he's been in this space for a while. Uh, he says if we do see that breakdown, so if this uh, back test, this level of uh, support that is being formed right now, we can uh, we can see it as uh, an old level of resistance here, but also an old level of resistance that we saw way back in, uh, when was it, December of 2020. Bitcoin hit that all-time high, got rejected a couple of times before breaking out and moving to new all-time highs. That is the next level, guys, and, uh, you know, it could spell more pain before we see some more gains. So, um, what would be the next level? I mean, I could realistically see an 80% correction maybe coming up uh, to this level here, a level that we saw back in uh, June, I think it was June of 2019, okay, so 13,800, um, perhaps. That would be an 80% correction, roughly 80% for Bitcoin at that time. And uh, in the past, we've seen anywhere between 80 to 90% corrections for different types of cryptos. And nothing really to talk about with regards to XRP either, but uh, I figured I should just bring it up. Uh, trading right now just shy of 33 cents. So we are seeing that bottom formulate there. Just following the Bitcoin trend though at the moment. So that's the market in a nutshell, guys. Um, I'm still waiting on the sidelines. I have not gotten into any positions yet. Um, however, I know I've mentioned to you guys that I am eyeing Algorand right now. Algorand trading at 31 cents, roughly 31 cents. Um, and so if we do see more lows, I'm sure that, uh, you know, altcoins will even be hemorrhaging a lot of their value and, uh, you know, finding a nice entry spot for some of the uh, cryptocurrencies that uh, I currently own, but don't really have a lot of. Those are the ones that I'll be focusing on. So ADA is going to be another cryptocurrency that I'm, uh, that I'm, that I'm looking into at this moment in time. Here, let's put it on the uh, the Binance chart. 49 and a half cents for, uh, for Cardano's ADA at this moment in time. So uh, these cryptos have corrected significantly uh, and Cardano's down, as you guys can see, 84%. So, you know, this is par for the course for altcoins. Altcoins usually lose a lot more of their value than Bitcoin does. XRP is down uh, roughly 83% as well. If we do see upwards of a 90% correction though, this is what we are to expect. We saw it in 2018. And in a lot of ways, I mean, we were really early in 2018 because now I'm feeling more confident than ever uh, to be investing at these low prices, not because I have the experience now, but because of what we're seeing in general with regards to cryptocurrency. I mean, companies like Circle are doing things like this. This tweeted out by Jeremy Allaire. Today, we announced our second major fiat-backed stablecoin, the Eurocoin, which went live on Ethereum mainnet and will be available to mint and redeem on June the 30th. So guys, this is the latest from Circle, built to a higher standard. This is the Eurocoin EuroC, uh, which is similar to the USDC coin issued by Circle under the same full reserve model as the USDC coin, a trusted digital dollar currency with more than $54 billion in circulation. Designed for stability, Eurocoin is 100% backed by euros held in euro-denominated bank accounts so that it's always redeemable one for one for euros. So this is what uh, this is the latest update here coming from Circle, the creators of the USDC coin, uh, now creating another stable coin, the Euro coin, and that will be available June 20th. So you know, just speaking to the entire crypto market as a whole, we are closer to adoption than we were back in 2018, obviously. And you know, these prices again do not scare me. 
Um, another piece of news here, guys, from BitTrue Official. Congratulations to the Flare Networks. The official Flare FLR launch is approaching, guys. We will be getting our Spark tokens on July the 4th. At least that is uh, the plan as of now. Of course, you can purchase FLR IOU on BitTrue right now. It's up 15% today after the news. Songbird SGB and FLR Canary Network is also open for trading. So uh, for those of you guys who may be looking to uh, purchase more or somewhere to put your Flare uh, tokens or your SGB tokens, I know uh, BitTrue is a great exchange. I do have an affiliate link in the description too if you want to use that. Um, they're a great exchange. They're also very XRP-centric. Uh, so there are a lot of trading pairs with the XRP cryptocurrency. I found that I'm starting to use them more and more for this kind of thing. Anyway, this was the statement from Flare. Successful audit launch details end of next week. Onward. Summary of findings, so the audit did not uncover any significant flaws or defects that could impact the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of a Flare node or the network at large. A summary of the findings is provided below. And so uh, if you guys want, you can follow Flare Networks over there on Twitter for more information. But um, it, it looks as though everything is on track. That's great news. Again, just speaking to the broader crypto community, the broader crypto space. Also wanted to mention this, guys, from Yasin Mubarak here on Twitter, Michelle Bond who used to be the head for Ripple's government outreach efforts? Well, now she's running for U.S. Congress in New York's 1st District. My name is Michelle Bond, she posted on Twitter. I'm running for Congress in New York's 1st District. I'm hitting the campaign trail to make sure Suffolk County is represented by a conservative businesswoman, not a career politician. So there you have it. Michelle Bond uh, used to be head of government outreach for Ripple, is now running for Congress. Interesting to say the least. So, you know, this is the biggest pain point as of now. The Digital Chamber of Commerce also uh, pointing out that the crypto market really does need to see more serious regulatory clarity by the United States. The senators got this right, they tweeted out. The SEC has consistently utilized these backdoor attempts to restrain the crypto market. Instead of transparency and public engagement, the SEC continues to lead with enforcement. Thank you to Senator Haggerty for leading this effort. And so uh, just retweeting out Senator Bill Haggerty's tweet here. With regards to the SEC's Bulletin 121 establishes regulation disguised as guidance, evading requirements under the Administrative Procedure Act designed to ensure transparency and allow input from those affected by rulemaking. I'm pushing back on this backdoor attempt to restrain the crypto market. So uh, note how they both word this, this backdoor attempt uh, to restrain the crypto market. It is something that the SEC has been trying to be very sneaky about, but I feel like they're being outed every step of the way. And it used to be just the XRP community, but I think more people are catching on now. Bill at Balisarius 2020 also posting this interesting article on a proposed regulation of the SEC, which according to the article will expand the definition of exchange to include many business models previously outside its scope, including both centralized and decentralized crypto exchanges. So shady backdoor business attempts to restrain the crypto market. Is this just another example of that? Well, let me read you guys this crypto exchanges and the SEC, how they're proposing to redefine an exchange. And so I know this isn't, uh, this doesn't have to do with the Ripple SEC case specifically, but could it actually affect XRP in, a, in, in the event that XRP does get clarity, even if they do win the case, is this another way, perhaps a plan B from the SEC? And I mean, it wouldn't be just affecting XRP. By extension, it would affect many other uh, cryptocurrencies and exchanges. But could this be another way that they could get their way, even if they do lose in court? So let me read you guys this. So recently, the SEC published a proposed new regulation to amend the definition of an exchange. And on the surface, that sounds like, okay, what do you what do you want to incorporate in this definition for purposes of the Securities Exchange Act? Any person whose conduct meets the proposed rules new definition would be required to register as an exchange or apply for an exemption by registering as an alternative trading system or an ATS. According to the proposed rule, the redefinition is intended to bring under SEC regulation certain traders in the government securities market. However, many observers have noted that the impact of the definition or the redefinition is overbroad in terms of its stated intent and it would extend to the requirements to register as an exchange or ATS to many business models previously outside its scope. The new definition is broad enough to cover both centralized and decentralized crypto exchanges. Simply put, the proposed rule extends the exchange registration requirement to any person or group that makes available a communications protocol system and therein... Uh, lies the broad definition to conduct trades 
Given the tension between the SEC and the crypto industry, it's no surprise that crypto exchanges and other players view this move with extraordinary skepticism. Some commentators have described the relationship as a game of cat and mouse. In light of the many public statements regarding crypto and crypto exchanges, the SEC representatives, and the, the wide array of legal challenges facing the industry, concern regarding this proposed rule is merited and invites the question, what laws and regulations currently apply to crypto exchanges? And so... They're really trying to now go after these uh, the, the exchanges. At, at first, they thought, okay, we'll just go after cryptos. We'll just assume that they're all securities if they, uh, you know, if they started out with an ICO. But then they found out the SEC, I believe, is slowly finding out, slowly realizing that not every cryptocurrency was created equally, and so we cannot paint them all with one broad brush, despite how much. We are trying to do that, um, but the court is seeing through our arguments, and we are too weak. We do not. We are not prepared enough to be able to fight all these cryptocurrencies because they're all going to be different. And so, how else can we control the system? Well, let's hit them at the exchange level, the on ramps and the off ramps. That's really what's going to affect essentially people. Um, being able to capitalize off cryptocurrencies in a trading environment. And now they want to extend this to other, because I'm sure there are now ways that you can custody crypto that would not fit the definition of a, of a traditional exchange. But now they want to broaden that definition to incorporate more people. And um, obviously the crypto industry is not too keen on this. Um, so this just uh, keeps going on. This is just, uh, you know, in more detail, just uh, what, what all this stuff is. I want to move down to the bottom though, because here's where I really found it has an impact. The proposed rule would redefine exchange and extend the registration requirement to include any organization or group of persons that, by the way, of any communication protocol system brings together buyers and sellers using trading interest under which buyers and sellers can interact and agree to terms of the trade. In addition, trading interest in addition to an order is redefined to mean any non-firm indication of a willingness to buy or sell a security that identifies at least the security and either quantity, direction buy or sell, or price. Several comments on the proposed rule from market participants have observed that it would have a devastating impact, both for the industry and holders of digital assets. They further comment that the proposed rule suffers from procedural defects as applied to the digital assets industry and does not comply with the Administrative Procedures Act. Others have opined that the SEC is without statutory authority to redefine exchange as broadly as proposed in the new rule. So some are even saying the SEC has no right, has no business doing this. Among the challenges noted by industry participants is the difficulty of registering ATS platforms that trade in digital assets with the SEC and FINRA. Further, because of their decentralized nature, at least some decentralized crypto exchanges implemented by communications protocol systems may not have any realistic possibility of registering as an ATS. As a result of these and other issues, crypto industry participants have voiced grave concerns and have signaled their willingness to defend future enforcement actions. Whether the SEC will proceed with the proposed rule as written or make modifications to accommodate the digital assets industry remains to be seen, of course. Uh, the public comment period was back in April, but then they just re recently reopened this on June the 13th, 2022. One thing is certain, the story on crypto exchanges and registrations has not been fully written yet. So here we are, uh, the SEC now looking really seriously at this uh, in terms of, you know, regulating on and off ramps and broadening that definition, which leads Bill to this question, which, um, you know, could have a lot of implications, I think, with not just centralized or decentralized exchanges, but what about distributed ledger technology networks or certain types of blockchains. This article states that the public comment period on the proposed rule closed on April 18th, but the SEC recently reopened it on June the 13th. This is uh, posted by Bill. And here's his main concern. If the SEC proceeds with the proposal, does this require the world's oldest crypto DEX, the XRPL, to be registered as an exchange? So think about that for a second. Would this affect, by and large, the XRPL, and by extension, all types of platforms similar to the XRPL, which would, uh, you know, in, in essence, affect blockchain as a whole. Um, just bringing us back to this, the definition way too broad. Um, so it sounds as though, I mean, it could affect, I mean, I, I don't see why it wouldn't, especially in this uh, iteration of the, uh, of the definition. XRP Serpent says, who would register since it's decentralized? Well, that's a good question. Bill responding here, exactly. Which one of the thousands of developers of projects or the owners of the protocol, who knows? If nobody owns the damn thing, how can you actually register it as an exchange? 
I guess that would go for the Bitcoin network too. So this could have an effect on the XRPL. I totally understand Bill's point here, um, but I don't think that this is going to uh, last. I, I really don't think that we're going to see this in this iteration. I think there are just way too many problems with this, and uh, there are going to be a lot of people that speak out. That said, though, the SEC is trying tooth and nail to uh, reclaim perhaps some of the territory that they see as being lost. Backdoor attempts to restrain crypto. Uh, we're on to you guys. Uh, the XRP community has been on to you since day one, and now the Chamber of Digital Commerce posting this. Members of Congress also, you know, really warning that, uh, you know, this is not right. This is not going to foster a healthy crypto environment in the United States. But maybe this is the time to be going through these teething pains considering the market is depressed. All we can do is sit back, save our dollars, and focus on our investment strategies, investing in the cryptocurrencies that we see will have a future in the coming years. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.